Um, so we are going to be talking about creative climate solutions and how people of faith can address climate change today. Uh, let's go to the next slide. And so uh, we are faith in place. Uh, we empower Illinois people of all faiths to be leaders in caring for the earth. We educate, connect, and advocate for healthier communities. Um, and we believe strongly that when people of faith are leading the environmental movement, that we focus on justice and care for our common home and love for our neighbors, uh, which is really how we are going to make this long lasting change that needs to be made because it's uh, centered on care for one another. Let's go to the next slide. So Faith in Place has offices all over the state. We are a statewide organization and we're the Illinois affiliate of Interfaith Power and Light, which is a national organization. Um, but we're just in Illinois. And so we have offices, our main offices are in Chicago. We have a Lake County office, a North and West suburbs office. Cindy, my co-presenter today is located in the uh, Urbana-Champaign office. And I'm the Southern Illinois Outreach Coordinator. I sit in Mattoon, Illinois, but I outreach to the bottom third uh, of the state uh, that includes the Metro East area and Southern Illinois. We can go to the next slide. So we wanna hear about you. Where are you located? Uh, and what are, uh, where are you located in the state? So we can more accurately connect with you going forward, certainly, but it's just always interesting to see where everybody's from. So let's see, where are y'all from? Oh, look, there's a poll. How fun is that? So we've got some Chicago folks, some central Illinois folks, North and West suburbs. Elsewhere, ooh, intriguing. Let's take another minute and everybody has a chance to, instead of typing in the chat, answer the poll <laughs> to see where we're all from. All right, let's go ahead and end that poll. So looks like we've got several folks from central Illinois, welcome. Some north and west suburbs in Chicago folks, welcome. And elsewhere, I'm just curious as to where elsewhere would be, maybe outside of the state of Illinois. So uh, it's great to have you. Thank you for sharing your afternoon lunch break with us. Um, so let's keep going to the next slide. And uh, I'll introduce myself again. I'm Christina Kroos, the Southern Illinois Outreach Coordinator for Faith in Place. Cindy, introduce yourself and then away we go. All right, great. I'm Cindy Shepard and I've been in uh, uh, Central Illinois office for about six years. So great to be with you this afternoon. Today's webinar is all about finding climate solutions creatively. And so today's we're going to talk about the climate crisis, what, uh, what causes it, and just, just review the science a little bit and talk about solutions then that we can take individually and collectively. And finally, we're gonna have a chance for you to learn more about upcoming events that Faith in Place is helping uh, organize so that you can uh, take part in those. I'm looking forward to chatting with you. Anytime during the webinar, if you do have questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the chat and we will try to work those in and get to them uh, at least in our question and answer and, may and maybe before. But if you don't type them in there, I would forget what they were. So <laughs> go ahead and do that anytime. Next slide. Let's just talk a little bit about the climate crisis and the science behind it. Uh, this is uh, not a, a matter of opinion or a matter of controversy. This is just the science. Uh, next slide. Uh, as I'm sure you know, uh, climate change is caused by the buildup of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, our beautiful, delicate, life-giving atmosphere. Um, and the greenhouse gases come from both natural and man-made sources. But uh, the fact of the matter is since the uh, Industrial Revolution, it's been man-made sources that have pushed the greenhouse gases out of the balance that they used to have. So next slide. Um, so that because they're out of balance, those extra greenhouse gases form like a warm blanket, a uh, part of our atmosphere and that's thicker and thicker and re, uh, 
keeps us from releasing heat back out into space and concentrates it where it has detrimental effects for human life and all of life. Next slide. Um, carbon dioxide is the most common greenhouse gas. It's the one that we have the most of, and it's measured in an observatory on Mauna Loa Island in Hawaii. Uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has been collecting uh, CO2 readings now since the 1960s. And as you can see, the line is going straight up. Uh, the Paris Climate Accord and and climate scientists consensus is that we should try to keep our global warming at 1.5 degrees centigrade. Um, however, in order to do that, we would have to have uh, a lower concentration than we do now. Uh, we believe that with uh, concentration uh, over 400, that we'll be closer to two degrees centigrade uh, as a climate change, uh, as a global climate reading. And in fact, in May of this year, uh, we approached that reading of 417 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Um, the higher those readings are, the more difficult it is and the more urgent it is that we mitigate climate change by reducing emissions and sequestering carbon uh, throughout our atmosphere. Next slide. Christine is going to tell you about the impacts. Yeah, and so the impacts of this increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is, is many, um, and we're seeing them already. This is not something that's going to be happening in the future anymore, like it was when maybe I was younger. This is happening now, and this is in my children's lifetime, and perhaps your children or grandchildren's lifetime. Next slide, Katie. So some of these climate impacts uh, are in, uh, that we see here in the Midwest would be flooding, low air quality, and heat waves. Um, you know, we saw significant flooding for our farmers uh, in the spring of this year. Um, I think all of the counties of Illinois were declared disaster areas in 2019 uh, be, because of the flooding problems and, and the, you know, and then in some areas, the dryness uh, really making it hard for our farmers to do what they need to do. And so warmer temperatures make air quality worse. So those who already have impacted breathing through asthma issues or other respiratory you know, ailments, certainly COVID, uh, this, this poor air quality makes that much worse. And so hotter weather, um, because of the, the, the heat trapped in our atmosphere is not great for those who have uh, compromised immunity or who have health impacts already, the elderly, those without access to air conditioning, um, this is not good. Uh, and extreme temperatures like causing heat waves like the one that we celebrated the 25th anniversary of um, in Chicago um, are deadly. And you know, just another little bit of a, a COVID uh, intersection here. Many of the places that folks used to go to get relief from the heat like libraries and restaurants or, or things like that were closed uh, during the time of, of our quarantining. And so folks who just need to beat the heat had an even harder time this year. And go to the next slide. And so this is a justice issue. These impacts don't affect us equally. Uh, they impact the sensitive populations, people of color, the, the old, the young, um, people with less resources to rebound from these kinds of things. Uh, it, uh, those who cannot access medical care, those that have trouble getting enough to eat, all of these things uh, make those injustices worse. And so, um, the people who benefited least from the burning of fossil fuels uh, are impacted the most. So big corporations are the ones responsible for most of this uh, fossil fuel burning. They have benefited greatly, uh, but they have impacted lots of folks who did not benefit from that economic system. And so we want justice-based solutions to this justice problem. So if you go to the next, yep, thank you, Katie. So, um, I love this quote from Pope Francis, uh, shout out to my Catholic friends. I was raised Catholic uh, and Pope Francis has said that, you know, we are dealing here with something that requires an integrated approach. 
Um, we cannot solve the climate crisis in a vacuum. We cannot just deal with the uh, carbon issues because we have to deal with poverty. We have to deal with um, the inequalities in our system. We have to protect nature and have a sense that all of us need to care for one another. Uh, when we build off of that foundation, we'll be able to solve some of the more technical problems uh, that are, you know, impact that, that the climate crisis needs solutions to. So, um, and as people of faith, I feel like we are uh, well uh, situated to maybe take the lead in, in that. Cindy, tell us about climate solutions. So let's talk about climate solutions. When we're faced with a huge problem, it's time for us to get creative, not get overwhelmed or, or get depressed, but get busy and get creative about it. And people of faith certainly have been doing that in, in Illinois and around the world. So let's talk a, a bit about ways that we can contribute to the climate solutions in ways both individual and large. First, let's talk about one thing that we don't think about very often, and that is, as individuals, we can reduce our food waste as families and as houses of worship. We have found out that one third of the world's food is actually wasted. Now, it's not all because we didn't lick our plates. It, a lot of it is wasted in the fields. A lot of it's wasted in processing. But nonetheless, it's pretty staggering to think that a third of the world's food doesn't produce health and happiness for human beings and animals, it produces greenhouse gas. So the United Nations has said that if food waste was a country, it'd be number three in global gas house emissions. Amazing. Next slide. There are great ways for us to reduce waste. Um, and one of the ways that you can get plugged into some of those are through a wonderful waste toolkit resource that Christina put together for Faith in Place. And the, um, the link for that toolkit is right there on your screen. Uh, if you don't get it copied right now, you can find it in the Faith, at the Faith in Place website as well. But this is a way for us to systematically look at our own personal habits and the things that we do together in our houses of worship to think this is something that we can do. And by doing it, we may not save one third of the global gas greenhouse gas emissions, but we will be disciplined ourselves and we will be setting an example for others. So that one creative way to uh, reduce greenhouse gases is reducing food waste. Next, energy efficiency is another way that uh, we can reduce greenhouse gases. And that's true, again, both individually and corporately, because all our buildings that are heated and cooled, all that energy that goes into our residences and our houses of worship and the places where we work and the places where we shop, a third of that just kind of does nothing for us but escapes. It's wasted energy. And the cheapest energy is the one that you don't use, right? Because it costs you zero. So we can reduce energy efficiency, next slide, around our homes and, and other places by using resources and proven technologies that already we know work. Next slide. There's a free guide from the Citizens Utility Oh, I'm lo I'm lost the B. Maybe it's a bureau. <laughs> oh, it's a board. Citizens Utility Board. I'm sorry. Read the slide, Cindy. Um, but this this free guide can help you find the ways around your home where energy escapes without doing you any good. Um, and it's amazing how much energy can be wasted. Energy that will show up in your comfort around your home and in the uh, in the lower utility bills. So I encourage you to look at that um, at that uh, link as well. Energy efficiency can also be improved by signing up for smart energy programs through your utility. Both ComEd and Ameren Illinois have ways for us to, uh, to save on energy. Next slide. And let's find out a little bit more about them right now. 
Seems today that everything is getting smarter. Smartphones, smart TVs, even vacuum cleaners. But the grid that powers all those devices, not so smart. It's a one-way system where electric bills are often based on estimates, not actual readings, leaving you with surprise charges. Holy coyote. And the electric company doesn't know there's an outage until customers call in. That's why Illinois is investing in a new smart grid where information flows in multiple directions between you and your energy provider, giving you an accurate bill every month and letting you monitor your energy usage. You can even sign up for programs, giving you lower rates and rebates in exchange for using energy during off-peak hours. Your smart meter can help you hunt down vampire devices that drain electricity when they're not being used. And when a storm strikes, the smart grid can better prevent outages from spreading. These and other smart grid features are powering up and headed your way. So you can not only be smart, you can save smart. Learn more at Smart Power Illinois and share this video with your neighbors. today that everything is all right let's go to the next slide katie okay so how do we do this then how can we be better uh energy consumers well if you are a comed customer or an amarin customer you have some options comed has what's called a peak time savings program and an hourly pricing program. Those same programs exist under Ameren. Ameren calls them something a little different though. Ameren calls it peak time rewards rather than peak time savings and power smart pricing rather than hourly pricing. Comet also has a central uh, air conditioning cycling program. Uh, utilities are working on time of use pro pricing plans and Illinois net metering, which is kind of under attack right now and we're working on some advocacy around that. Um, these are all the different options that you have as a consumer, whether you're a ComEd customer or an Ameren customer. So let's break down the two simplest things that you can do right now, a peak time program or an hourly pricing or power smart program. We're gonna uh, see a quick little video uh, that explains that right now. No, we're not. We're going to talk about, go back, peak time rewards. We'll talk about that one first. So peak time rewards or, um, or hourly pricing, if you're a ComEd customer, is a, uh, a residential program. So this wouldn't work for your church, but this works for you personally as a you know, residential customer. You have to opt in uh, to this program and you have to have a smart meter. Uh, which we all should have at this point, but you'll know by looking outside at your electric meter and if it has a digital read instead of the spinny wheels that it used to have, you have a smart meter. So this is an opt-in program where you get paid to use less electricity at a high demand time. So think about super hot summer days where lots of folks are using their air conditioning. Uh, they will, the utility will credit your bill for the amount of energy that you decrease during this peak time uh, event, which the utility will call 24 hours in advance of the, um, of the event. This costs you nothing to enroll and they will alert you uh, by text or email or by a phone call. You get to opt in when you sign up for which way you know, is easiest for you to communicate. And you'll be notified when there's a peak day. Usually they'll say uh, between the hours of two and 5 p.m., you know, we're having a peak event. And so then you can go around your house and unplug things or uh, turn your air conditioning off for that amount of time and turn your ceiling fans on um, just during that amount of time to decrease your use, which again, you'll see reflected in your bill. So there's no penalty if you enroll and don't participate, it's only savings. Uh, okay, 
So the next kind of program that you can participate in is called Power Smart Pricing, or this is the uh, hourly pricing uh, program for ComEd customers as well. This again is a residential customer program. So um, you can't put your house of worship on this program, just you as a customer can put it on, uh, on your particular home. So this is where you sign up and it costs you like $2 and some change per month to participate in this program. But it allows you to access the market wholesale price of energy uh, as a consumer, which you know is cheaper than that one, um, you know, that average uh, price that most of us are probably paying. So you will get alerts if you sign up, uh, up for this program if prices are approaching uh, a higher price point than you're comfortable with, and at which point you can go around your house and unplug some stuff so that you stay below um, you know, your energy usage or you can reduce your energy uses, usage as the price, rate, price increases. So you can choose to use less energy during a high price time, which will save you money on your energy bill. Typically, consumers that participate in this program save about $100 a month, and that's with not doing a whole lot of anything um, to reduce their particular usage. If you're super disciplined about only washing your clothes in the evening or running the dishwasher in the evening when prices are lower, you could stand to save a lot of money. Um, but even if you didn't do a whole lot, it would still save you money on average on your um, electric bill. And let's go to the next slide. So we're gonna pull up a poll here to see, now that you've heard a little bit about Power Smart pricing or peak time rewards, or again, if you're a ComEd customer, they call that Power Smart, um, or they call it hourly pricing and peak time savings or rebates. Um, but this, they're the same thing. Would you sign up for a program like this? Or perhaps maybe you already have. So let's see. Yes, I would sign up for both. I would sign up for Power Smart Pricing only. I would sign up for the Peak Time Program only. I'm not interested in either, or I might, but I need some more information. Give it another minute. We've got a couple more folks trying to vote. I recognize it takes a minute to read all of this. So it looks like um, most people would do both. That's really encouraging. And that's a really great thing uh, that you can do, you know, right now in your home. Um, and we will share some links with you about where you can get signed up for those programs. Uh, they will come to you in an email probably tomorrow, but um, I don't think I have them in the chat. So you will get an email about where to find that information. All right. And now Cindy is going to tell us, so we've talked about a lot of personal change that can happen by you reducing your usage at home, which again shows love for our creation and love for our neighbors by lowering our impact, reducing the amount of carbon in the air, making folks able to breathe a little bit easier um, so that's personal change that we can do. But we also need to talk about the big policy change that needs to happen as well. And so Cindy's gonna tell us more about that. Thanks, Christina. I do think that the individual change is a wonderful things for us to do, but it really needs to be followed up by some investment in our public uh, policy and shaping that public policy in a way that makes for a cleaner environment and a more just system for ourselves and our neighbors. And we have a great opportunity to do that uh, when we support the Clean Energy Jobs Act, which is in the front of the Illinois legislature uh, as soon as they come back uh, during veto session. Uh, the Clean Energy Jobs Act is sort of the next step in our Illinois energy evolution. Uh, we've passed the Future Energy Jobs Act in a bipartisan way in 2016. It was signed by a Republican governor because clean energy creates jobs, improves the economy, and it can create equity in our system. All of those things are super important. So over the next uh, few years after that act passed, Christina and I and, and 
dozens of other people went across the state of Illinois to listen to people's dreams about what a clean energy future could look like for us and took all of those citizens uh, input and shaped a bill that's really massive and beautiful and and it's huge. I'll tell you, I think of it like a blue whale. It's just a gigantic, <laughs> comprehensive, gorgeous, uh, gorgeous bill. And I want to tell you about the four pillars that that undergird it all the way through. The first one is equity. We want the, uh, the Clean Energy Jobs Act promotes jobs and equity and economic opportunity, especially for those communities that Christina was talking about at the very first that have suffered because they had power plants there, that have suffered because their whole economy has been based on fossil fuels, that have suffered because of the health, uh, the health challenges that they've faced uh, with uh, asthma and with lack of access to fresh food. So pillar one is equity and it's woven throughout the rest of the bill. So we want communities across Illinois to receive the benefits of clean renewable power. There are employment benefits, there's economic benefits, as well as environmental benefits. And it, we wanna create a state system where we all share those things with one another. Pillar two is that uh, we have a goal of reaching 100% renewable energy by 2050. And if that sounds familiar to you, that's because that's the goal that scientists tell us is extremely important for us to reach across the world. Um, that's the Paris Climate Accord goal. And that's the goal that we can lead the way to achieving here in Illinois. Pillar three is to reduce pollution equivalent of a million gas and diesel powered vehicles from the road. And here too, amazingly enough, we are starting to see drops in emissions from power plants as fossil fuel power plants are replaced by renewables. But what that means is that the largest sector of our economy uh, to release greenhouse gas emissions is our transportation sector. So it's not all of us just driving around in our little buggies. It is uh, trucks and mass transportation. It's uh, even trains. All those things uh, need to be brought to a cleaner place. And CJA has ways for us to do that, again, across sectors of our economy. So not just electric cars for people who need a car to get around, but uh, electric mass transit in our cities, uh, sort of last mile solutions for people who might be able to use mass transit except for that last little bit. It's an incredibly creative approach to uh, bringing down greenhouse gases from transportation sector. And then pillar four is, again, going back to our carbon-free power sector. We think by 2030, just think in 10 years, we could have a net zero power sector here in Illinois. And we do it by replacing fossil fuel plants with clean, renewable wind and solar that creates jobs, that creates jobs in communities abandoned by power plants, creates jobs in places where people have been dealing with uh, environmental degradation for generations. We think that's really, really exciting. Uh, next slide. And we're really excited about the Illinois Solar for All program, which began again in Fiji to a way to bring solar to people who have not been have, in under-resourced communities um, and is being expanded in CJA. The Illinois Solar for All program can put solar on houses in low-income areas without any money down. It can also has a, a pot of incentives for houses of worship and nonprofits that serve low income and economic and environmental justice areas, as well as another set of incentives for community solar. And I'm super excited that Urbana has the first of these um, community solar programs built on a brownfield. It's built on an old closed landfill in an economic justice area of Urbana. And it's going to provide 350 to 400 
families who meet income qualifications with community solar. So we're really super excited about that. And I'll put the link to that in the follow-up email that you get to. Uh, you might be interested uh, to see if your family might qualify, or you might have friends and neighbors and children that might be able to qualify for this community solar project. Next slide. At Faith in Place, we empower people of faith to fight climate change, but addressing the problem is not enough. We wanna solve it in a way that prioritizes those most affected by climate change's impacts. We want climate justice. That is why we support the Illinois Solar for All program. Traditionally, solar energy is only available for wealthier communities. Illinois Solar for All is designed to give low wealth communities access to solar energy through incentives that make solar installations affordable and keep electric bills down. The program is designed to serve people historically left out of the solar market, low to moderate income households, people of color, and residents of environmental justice communities which are most impacted by pollution from fossil fuels. A quarter of the program's funds are reserved for projects located in these communities. Illinois Solar for All also trains citizens returning from the justice system or leaving foster care to be solar installers and then incentivizes solar contractors to hire this new workforce. Access to a solar career can make the difference for someone returning from prison. These jobs provide resources that help build a just economy while increasing resilience to climate change for communities. Learn more about Solar for All and other just climate solutions by reaching out to Faith in Place. Thanks, Katie. So now I want to know, are you interested in solar? There we go. You've got a choice of, I already have it. Yay, yay, yay. Oh, uh, yes, I'm interested or no, I don't think so right now. So take a minute and think uh, and think broadly, get creative because we, it doesn't have to be solar on your own house. It could be a community solar project. It could be uh, uh, helping promote solar in environmental justice communities near where you live. Has everybody had a chance to look at that? Wait, I, di I didn't put my entry in. I'll tell you, great. Um, we didn't, oh, not a single no, fabulous. Um, <laughs> I see I'm not the only one who has solar um, at, at my residence, but I'm really pleased that the rest of you are, are interested in solar. And I hope that you will find out more from Faith in Place and from uh, Community Solar near you. Next slide. Thanks, Katie. So now it's time to take action. We can get creative and, and do some great things to make a difference for climate change. We can, for instance, reduce food waste. That doesn't mean we have to belong to the Clean Plate Club, but it does mean we can, we can make changes. We can do an energy audit, uh, and there'll be a link to a place for uh, energy audit information when you get your email follow-up. You can start a green team in your own community of faith or house of worship. Um, one of my green teams usually meets on Thursday uh, at noon, and I know some of you are here today. So welcome. Uh, starting a green team is a way to uh, increase your individual impact and make you sure your house of worship is a leader. Uh, the, you could also smart up sign up for one of those smart energy programs that uh, smart energy uh, or power smart pricing that Christina talked about. Could also support the Clean Energy Jobs Act by signing our petition. We really need to put the pressure on our legislation, legislators and on the governor to make sure that, that the Clean Energy Jobs Act passes here. It's a perfect way to jumpstart our recovery from the difficult economic times that we've had because of COVID. And if you're really excited, uh, or, or even if you're not, this year we've got virtual lobby day coming up, November the 12th. 
Instead of riding a bus to Springfield, you can sign up to meet with your legislator on Zoom and tell them why clean energy is so important to you. I, you'll get the link for that. And I look forward to seeing lots of people and lots of legislators on November the 12th. So let's see some Let's see some of your creative ideas in the chat box. What are some ways that you'd like to take action on climate change? And again, you can find that chat function. Uh, if your screen is kind of small, you might have to look at the spot that has the three dots and says more and look for the word chat. Otherwise it looks like a little speech bubble. I put mine in, Christina. I said, I'm gonna take a virtual bus to Springfield for lobby day. <laughs> I'll share that we just moved to a new house this summer. And so I am learning uh, the ins and outs of our new you know, <laughs> air conditioning and we actually have steam baseboard heat. Uh, so, which is a pretty efficient way to heat your home, except you got to get the thermostat just right. So on a day like today where the high is 81, uh, but yesterday it was like in the cold, you know, 40s, uh, you know, making sure that we're using those thermostats or programmable thermostats where we can uh, to keep, you know, a constant comfortable temperature, but also adapting to the temperature around us, like wearing a jacket if it's cold or a sweater if it's cold rather than turning up the heat. So uh, that has been something I've had to do. Uh, we're, we're learning that how the how the system works in our house and hopefully we'll be able to be as efficient as possible here real soon. All right, I see a lot of composters. That's great. Maybe I can plug then while I see that you're interested in composting that did you know your pumpkins after you use them uh, for Halloween, if, if you have such things, um, typically go into a landfill and then create methane, which is a greenhouse gas emission that we don't want. So instead, why don't you find a local farmer or get connected to a pumpkin smash where you can uh, compost those pumpkins or even check with your local waste um, hauler or check with your local recycling center, uh, they may accept the pumpkins for compost. Uh, so they're not going into our waste stream. So that's something you might be able to do just in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I know I'll be hosting a pumpkin smash with a local farm out here where people can go and shuck those pumpkins, blow off a little steam, but also help that farmer then create some compost for their farm. So um, that's a cool thing that I've learned about this year and I'm given, given a shot. And compost is great for soil health and regenerative agriculture, which is a very large piece in sinking the carbon from our atmosphere uh, into the ground. So regenerative agriculture practices like composting is a huge help in reducing our greenhouse gases. So anytime we can do that, it's a good thing. Okay. We're at a regenerative farm this last weekend that just joined the Faith in Place Network up by Tiskawa. Tiskawa. Yep, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was it was beautiful. So many things are still growing there. For one thing, it was amazing, and uh, and they had huge piles of various uh, various uh, grades of compost that they had been working on and using to to grow this beautiful food and it was fabulous. Up, and your leaves make good compost. And so uh, rather than putting them in those, you know, lawn bags and, you know, chucking them off to a garbage, you might be able to find someone who can take them and, and help turn that into uh, compost. So, all right, well, then let's go on to the next slide, because I want there to be time for Q&A if we have it. So I haven't seen very many questions in the chat, but now would be the time. Uh, if you have any specific questions or, for Cindy or I about energy efficiency, about any of the things that we talked about today, um, throw it in the chat. Cindy and I will do our best to answer what we can right here. And if we can't, we'll follow up with you by email later uh, and find the answers if we need to. So who's got questions?
I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Well, we covered everything and we solved all the world, world's problems, Cindy. <laughs> we answered it all. Just follow these steps. Creative people here who are just, just chomping at the bit to go be creative and reduce their energy use right now. So I'll, I'll uh, point you to looking at the chat, though. There's a lot of links that we've been sharing through the chat today. Um, I'll mention that you can save the chat. If you open up the chat box and go to the three little dots in the bottom right hand side, if you click on that, it says save chat and it'll send it somewhere on your computer where you can save that chat where, you know, with all the links and things like that inside of it. So um, you will be getting an email with these links, you know, in it tomorrow. But if you need, if you just can't wait, uh, you can save the chat and be able to find those things uh, right now. Okay, so I do see a couple questions now though. Maria is asking, did Amron do away with some of the incentives for installation of solar panels? Okay, this is a complicated question. Uh, the short answer is yes. Amarin uh, is attempting to end their net metering program, which would mean uh, that consumers who want to put solar on their houses would not be able to receive the benefits of having solar on their house because they would not be credited for the solar that they produce. Uh, there is quite a bit of advocacy happening right now to tell Amarin to knock it off because that's not a good model for our communities and for our, our state. And so that is currently in flux. Um, there is within the Clean Energy Jobs Act that we hope uh, you know, passes here at veto session or hopefully maybe in lame duck session in the very early part of 2021, um, there are fixes there that will uh, save that program and do some you know, good things to some of the other solar programs uh, like Solar for All that we need to see. Um, but so yes, but it's also kind of a question mark right now. So Maria, I know that's probably not a satisfying answer, but um, it would be a great opportunity to send the uh, ICC, uh, Illinois Commerce Commission, uh, a message that says, hey, that's not a good thing for Amarin to do. Please, please fix that. And I see a question here about light bulbs. And uh, Betsy, you're, you're right. There are choices, especially um, for LED light bulbs. The CFL light bulbs, the curly ones that we used to use, um, most people have found they're, they're not as efficient as LEDs and they also don't produce as nice a light. But LEDs, you still have to kind of choose where you're gonna use it and they have daylight, uh, warm and cool. Those are, those are the basic uh, color options that are available. Uh, daylight is very, very bright um, and uh, cool is fairly harsh on the color spectrum. Uh, most people prefer warm light for indoor lighting. Uh, it, it makes our skin tones better. <laughs> the whole the whole room looks fine. Um, so that I would suggest starting with warm and seeing if that gives you the kind of light that you like and then maybe trying something brighter if you really um, need light for some specific purpose in a in a particular space. But good, really good question and keep looking you're going to find it. <laughs> Um, the, the next question in here is about the Lyle Aggregation Program and ComEd Hourly Programs. Both, both Christina and I are uh, in Ameren territory. Um, however, I do know that aggregation programs in general, you do have to switch out of your aggregation program in order to uh, sign up for hourly pricing. That, that's true uh, for, in Ameren territory. Uh, and I think it's true in ComEd territory as well. Um, it's easy to make those switches uh, and probably worth it uh, in terms of your energy bill and in the terms of shaping the, shaping the electrical system in a way that that's going to work out better in the long run. Yeah, I dropped in the chat, uh, Deborah, a link to what's called uh, Plugin Illinois, and it lists the different municipal aggregations uh, so you can look up by your city and see like when the contract ends for um, for Lyle, and I didn't look it up just yet, but I, I can look that up maybe in a, in a minute after I'm done with this. But um, so you'll be able to see if that's something that your city, you know, is almost done with, uh, or if they just signed a new contract. I'm not sure about that. Um, and it'll it should be able to tell you what the aggregation's uh, kilowatt hour price is versus what Ameren's base kilowatt hour price is. 
everyone's base price is pretty low right now. Um, and so it probably will save you money in the long run to switch back to Amaranth. I'm sorry, ComEd. <laughs> you're a comment customer uh so it's that price is it's probably worth it to switch back to to comment rather than um whatever your aggregation is but you'll be able to look that up on that website um and happy to help you with that uh offline if, if you need help with that energy choices uh we often have to balance you know um the aggregation in my community is all, all wind energy and solar energy. So I, I pay a little bit more to be part of the aggregation um, than I would if I was uh, using Ameren. But for, for me, that's that's worth the, the um, trade off. But we uh, we make choices based on on what's best for our families and what we can afford and what makes sense. So so keep at it. Um, See, uh, there's another, there's a question here about solar panel companies in Illinois. And Marie, I'm, I'm assuming that you're talking about solar installers in Illinois. Um, there, there are, uh, there are lots of, <laughs> lots of choices. Um, and uh, one of the best ways to find out is to watch for a group buy in your community or in your county. Um, the, Midwest Renewable Energy Association often sponsors group buys, which help educate people about solar and, uh, and then offer them a chance to get to know and get a proposal from a particular local solar company. Um, again, uh, the trade-offs might be between the very, very lowest price and working with somebody who lives in your community. Um, so those, those kinds of choices, I wouldn't tell you which to choose, but I, I would tell you, I think it's, you can't, you can't go wrong as long as you're trying to clean up the climate and take care of the future and, and be good to people here in Illinois. So all those things are great. Um, I also dropped in the chat, Cindy, uh, the list of the Illinois Solar for All vendors. Um, right. Those have been rigorously vetted uh, so that folks are getting a good deal and you know getting a solid company if they decide to go with a Solar for All installer. Uh, but they also probably might be doing work in your area. And so that might be a place where I would start. Um, you can search uh, that link based on your location. Um, and so like I said, those have all been pretty rigorously vetted. But right. a solar group buy is probably a great way. Let's see, who asked that question? Maria. Maria. Maria, I think, is located. Um, oh, Maria is in Charleston. There was a solar group buy in the East Central Illinois area last year. And so the whatever vendor they used would probably be best. We can connect offline. And I, I can't remember off the top of my mind mind who it was, but I think I have a good idea. So we can talk about that later. Yeah, and ask your friends that have solar. Ask me, I'll tell you who can on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because you have solar. Okay. The solar for all, um, they wanted to make sure that we didn't repeat the mistake that Illinois made when we uh, allowed alternative electric suppliers, because a lot of uh, sort of fly-by-night scammy kind of companies came in and knocked on doors and talked people into signing up for suppliers that weren't good for them. So this time the legislature said, uh-uh, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna have a certified process by which people have to prove that they are gonna provide customer care and good consumer protection. So those solar for all companies uh, that have gone through that process, you can pretty much count on the fact that they are gonna do right by the consumer. And, and you can do business with them even if you're not in a solar for all project or in an economic justice neighborhood. Those are, those are all uh, businesses that are, are installing solar in various projects around the state. Well. There's not any other questions. Maybe we can see what's left on the slides. <laughs> Oh, very good. Um, I'm going to drop in the chat my email address. And Cindy, I'll put yours in there too. Okay, great. So should you need to connect with us, uh, 
specifically for any reason. Uh, our emails are there. And again, if we can't answer the question for you, we can find somebody who can. So it might take a couple couple days or a couple emails, but we will definitely get you the answer. So uh, I, my email is Christina at faithinplace, all one word, dot org, and Cindy's uh, Cindy at faithinplace.org. Uh, you can follow us on our different social media uh, outlets. Uh, we're pretty pretty busy on there. You can find events, you can find uh, articles, you can find support for a green team if that's something you have or you're looking to establish. Um, our website, faithinplace.org, is a wealth of information. It's also where you can download most of these um, tool kits and things that we had uh, that we've mentioned today. Uh, and if you have any general questions for Faith in Place, uh, info at faithinplace.org would be the place to, to send general questions. And we are always happy to hear from you. Thank you so much for being with us this day and spending your lunch hour with us. I, I hope you got some nourishment as well. Also, uh, love that you were here and that you're interested in creative solutions for climate change. Thank you for all that you do to take care of the earth. So we'll sign off. Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Thank Kate. you. Thank you. And Harper. <laughs> and Harper. Who needs to go to school <laughs> right now? Have a good day.